Here are five cars that deserve the hype and five cars that don't. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And like you, because of this strange situation, we are stuck at home. However, that's given us the chance to do something that you've asked for and that we've been thinking about for a while. Right, so in the last couple of years, we've driven a lot of cars. Some of them exciting. Here we go. Whoa. Some of them really not. Foot down. And now I'm at passing speed. But the thing is, some cars exceed our expectations, and some really, really don't. So we've put together a list of the cars that impressed us most in the last year, and those that, well, fell short. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. So let's start with the five new cars that we think deserve the hype. Starting with this one, the Genesis G90. The G90. Here we have a car that came onto the scene with a refresh that brought with it nuts wheels and a grill that looked better off consuming krill than air. But needless to say, we thought it looked pretty pimpin'. James, I'm adding pimpin' to the list of words that you can't say with your accent, along with gangster. Oh, it's pretty gangster, I'll give you that. You really can't pull off that word, you know? Fair enough, yeah. The G90 has a naturally aspirated V8, rear wheel drive, tons of luxury, and a price tag that massively undercuts the competition. And it does it perfectly. If you can get over the badge and the slight power deficit, then the G90 really impressed us. The ride, the assists, the handling, and the extreme comfort that it offers meant that it was one of our favorite cars last year. More importantly, if it's good enough for Batman, it's good enough for me. Thomas, that was just you in a Batman suit. Where's Alfred? James, anyone can be Batman. That's the whole point. <laughs> He's such a Robin. Number four, the Honda Civic Type R. Okay, so this one isn't new, but it's still so controversial and hyped that we had to bring it up. Yeah, it's one of those cars that you have to drive to really appreciate it. Like, it's frantic, it's easy. And okay, yeah, it does look like it's been drawn by a 10-year-old. A very smart person said to me that it's like the Nickelback of cars. That is, out in public, you don't want to be seen listening to Nickelback. But at home, it's just... Cause we all just wanna be big rock stars living hilltop mansions driving 15 cars. Anyway, the point is the Type R absolutely lives up to its ridiculous styling and price. Actually, if you needed any more convincing, last year it gave a BMW M2 competition a run for its money around our test track and it downright embarrassed the new Toyota Supra, a car that we'll get to in a minute. Number three, the Hyundai Veloster N. Not only did this car live up to the hype, it was the one that shocked us the most from the moment we got into it. For us, the Veloster N made the same jump from the Veloster Turbo that the Honda Civic Type R did from the Honda Civic Si. In fact, the Type R and the Veloster N feel like they fill the void left in North America and our hearts by the Mazda Speed 3, the Focus RS, the Focus ST, and the Fiesta ST. A moment of silence for our fallen comrades. You see, the Veloster N is a front wheel drive hooligan that pops and it bangs and it oversteers. And you can complain as much as you want about the really stiff ride and the ugh, interior, but the thing is, is that the price tag silences all. Number two, the Tesla Model 3. And we don't mean the performance Model 3, because the regular one is where it's at. Yeah, even though Thomas showed us that the performance can do this. Like the Model Y I just drove, we think these cars are best kept low in price and hopefully you live somewhere where the incentives are good too. They're comfortable and speedy even at the base models and they're packed with tech, which is constantly getting upgraded over the air. They pretty much make the best daily drivers. Number one, the Shelby GT500. Break out the Mountain Dew, gentlemen, because this one is from America too. The Shelby GT500, or as Thomas calls it. This is the Shelby GT500. I said Shelby, I was just excited. Never mind. 
The point is, is that the Shelby GT500 is one of the most hyped cars of 2020, and it absolutely blew us away. We can honestly say that it is a car that is more than the sum of its parts. Yeah, because we drove the Shelby Super Snake, and unless you really want to be in the Shelby registry, it was priced too highly to be able to compete with the GT500, and it was kind of just a modified GT. The GT500, on the other hand, felt special from the ground up. The GT500 felt like a Camaro ZL1, but with more livability, more smoothness, better power delivery, a better ride. It's right now the ultimate pony car. I feel like the word pony makes it seem so innocent and trivialized it. It's the ultimate pony car. The disappointments. Number five, the 2020 Toyota Supra. Okay, it must be said that the Supra wasn't a total disappointment. It is very fun to drive. It does this. And it looks really cool. And we seem to like it more than most people. But the thing is, is that the hype for this car didn't quite seem to match the reality. Yeah, because as fun as it was, it didn't feel like a game changer. It felt like a prettier M240i. And there is zero hype for that car. It even has the same engine. And you can't even drive the Supra with the windows down because the buffeting is so extreme. Also, for whatever reason, it didn't quite seem to set a lap time that I was hoping for. It lost to a Honda Civic Type R, an M2 competition, an Audi RS3 around our test track. It just felt like I couldn't carry the speed that I wanted through the corners. But with that said, I am very excited to try the upgraded 2021 Toyota Supra. Number four, the Maybach S650. Okay, even with the amazing magic sky, the Maybach just felt like a normal Mercedes S-Class with some fancy interior bits and some extra badging. Actually, one of the most common comments on our video of that car, which happened to be bulletproof, by the way, was that it was better than a Rolls. No, no, it's not. It's also priced below the normal Mercedes-Benz S65. So even its pricing doesn't suggest something special. We thought with the reputation that Maybach had that it would be a Bentley killer. But the Bentleys, which are more expensive and handmade, feel a lot more special. And then Rolls-Royce, is just in another league entirely. Number three, the Honda Accord 2.0-liter turbo manual. So we've heard time and time again that the Honda Accord 2.0T Sport is a sports car. It's just not. It's a front-wheel drive, open-diffed, family sedan with a dull-feeling clutch and shifter. No, and no, a tune does not make it a sports car. But that doesn't mean that it isn't a very good car, and it is actually very fun to drive. And if you follow us on Instagram at the Throttle House, you'll know that I loved my time with the Accord Hybrid. I think in that trim, it amplifies the Accord strengths the best. Comfortable, spacious, and still fun to throw around town. So is the Accord worthy of the hype? Maybe, maybe not. Is it worthy of your wallet? 100%. I'd just stick to the 10 speed, not the manual. Number two, the Cadillac CT5 Sport. For years, Cadillac was known as having the best handling characteristics and the most engaging sports sedans. So we were very excited to try the brand new CT5. If you know Cadillac sedans, then you know how good they can be. And even though this wasn't the V model, it still said sport on it. And we wanted it to get our blood pumping just a little bit. And it didn't. I mean, it shined in some areas. It had great seats and a really high quality interior, but it had a really dull transmission and engine. And for 50 grand Canadian, we expected better. We will, however, be trying the CT5V very soon. And from everything we know, we hope that that's gonna fill in all those holes. And you know, a CT5V with Super Cruise sounds like it could be a brilliant car. And number one, the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive hatch. A car that we literally dreamed about. Hey what? Thomas, are you ready to drive the new Sky Active X Mazda Speed 3? I thought it wasn't out yet. Well, it is. The car that we hoped would give the WRX and the Golf R a run for their money. And it does have some amazing attributes. It has an interior quality that can blow hitchhikers away. Doesn't it look good? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And the interior, right, is so nice. Oh, man. Thank yeah. you. So, sh should I just stick my, my bags in the trunk? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Just, uh, just close that door for a second. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe it! That interior was so nice! And it has exterior styling that can only be described as beautiful. 
and it has a wonderfully quiet ride. They knocked it out of the park. And just like everyone else's, our hopes were high. Unfortunately, from the driver's seat and the rear passenger seat, it was a bit of a letdown. 186 horsepower to all four wheels sounds like a lot, but it just isn't. The car is woefully slow and unresponsive. And compared to the previous gen Mazda 3, it felt like Mazda kind of betrayed their fun to drive roots a little bit. And it's not cheap either. That said, the much cheaper front wheel drive sedan Mazda 3 that we drove felt way better suited to its price range. And we would save the 10 grand and get that with a good set of snow tires. So anyway, thank you for watching. I think we're gonna do a few more of these. That was fun. Um, supposed, supposed to cut to Thomas right now? What's he doing? <laughs> Okay, he's got back to doing isolated things. Right. What are you still doing here? Video's over. Actually, while I've got you here, I've had a lot of time on my hands and I've come up with some business ideas and I'm looking for some investors. First things first, business cards, but for your pet. Right? Billion dollars.